happy to see you all here this early in the morning. I agree. Um, <clears throat> we are going to talk a bit about failure. And we are going to do that. I'm going to share my journey with Kvitar, which is a company that me and a couple of friends started off um, and I was working with for four years. Last spring, I quit working with that and started to work for um, a, digital, a digital bureau called Good Old, where I was working until actually a, couple of, uh, a month ago. And on Monday, I'm starting a new job on a design bureau here in Malmö called Top Studio. But we're not going to talk about what I'm doing. We're going to talk about what I've experienced the last couple of years. And <coughs> maybe I should have gotten some water if it's if there is. Thanks. Um, and we're going to talk about it from the perspective of what I think as individual, not from the outside perspective, not from the external perspective on where we have been failing with Kvitar, because those are two different things. Um, we're also going to talk about mainly through three things, and these could be adapted to not only companies itself, startups, thank you, uh, but also if you're working with projects, if you're working with um, services, if you're working with products, and so on. So it could be applied to a lot of different things. And the three main things are... Uh, okay, so... Uh, team, goals, <coughs> and learnings. Re rearranging a bit. And <coughs> just to give you a short background, um, Kvitar was started back in hi, so, back in uh, 2009. At that time, with the vision to be able to get all these paper receipts digitally, automatically, all the way from a store or a restaurant into the internet bank. So you didn't have to care about it. It should just happen as you go and buy something. And together with um, nowadays, my husband and one of the founders of Bambooser, Mons Adler, and uh, Peter called me Soppy, Sunde, most known from the Pirate Bay. We started out working with this idea back in 2009. But pretty fast we noticed, okay, we should probably br bring some more people on here because both Peter and, and Mons were occupied with a lot of different stuff at that time. So we found a couple of friends that were genius, brought three more people on, and suddenly we were... Um, a pretty big team. I mean, we're a, t a team of six, which is actually a pretty good size for creating a team. We had good mixed competences. Perfect. We had a lot of good conditions for, for starting off. Um, but we started to walk and started to work a bit with each other. And, and pretty soon, now looking back, I started to notice, okay, there was something missing here. There was something missing. And... Um, just to give you a short background, I used to, I said, I used to study before I, let me see, come on, sit, sit. <laughs> before I started uh, working with Kvitar, I used to study at the leadership school called the Chaos Pilot. At the Chaos Pilot, it's a three-year education. You learn about how to lead people, how to lead teams, and how to create good conditions and help teams along the way. So we had all these learnings with us, and me and one of the colleagues I brought in to Kvitar have also been through that school. So we had a lot of competences, but we didn't really learn from it. So we didn't use it. So here I'm going to share a short, a short um, theory for people, for you, on how you can work with, um, with teams and what's happening. Um, so the first thing, and I would actually say that we had that quite a lot in, in, in Kvitar, but this is um, a pyramid you can use when you look at teams to see if they work or not. The first one is, uh, let 
me just double check so I'm absence of trust. I would say in the beginning that we were trusting each other quite a lot. We had a lot of confidence on things that should would be solved uh, by itself because we were all working for the common thing. Now we come into the second part, which is a bit more tricky. It's fear of conflict. What does that mean? It means that we don't, we didn't really take care of the problems and discussing them within the team properly. Properly. Uh, it also comes over to lack of commitment. What we also were lacking, that we didn't talk it through in the beginning within the entire team, how are we going to work with each other? What are we going to do? Who is actually going to be involved? And in what way? I don't know, how many of you are having, your, uh, having a startup today with a couple of more people? Anyone? There are some, okay. But even though you're working with another team, for example, in a project, what you wanted to discuss is, okay, how are we going to work? And when are we going to do that? And how can I count on you being there for me? That leads us over to, to the next one, which is avoidance of accountability. Because we want people and all of the people working in the same team be as involved in where we're going and as active in where we're going. Maybe you decide on the way that some people are going to be more or less active, um, but you still want to put those things on the table and discuss them through because otherwise there will be conflicts further on. And we were enjoying, enjoying it and trying out a couple of different ways. We had this vision of digital automatically receipts, all the ways from the store to the internet bank. Uh, we kind of knew where we were heading, but this, com this leads us over to, to the second part, which is about goals. We had the vision, kind of. We kind of knew where we were heading, but we didn't really know how to do it and when to do what. So, um, Let's see, let's take an example. Okay, imagine we have uh, two teams and I'm going to send them both out on a car ride. For team number one, I'll ask them to um, go back and forth to Ista and be back within two hours. To the second team, I will tell them to go out for a car ride and be back within two hours. Two hours pass and both teams are back in time. Team one has been to back and forth to Ista. How do you think they feel when I ask them? How did it go? Good, bad? Did they accomplish their mission? Yeah, good. Exactly, they did what they were asked for. They completed their mission, they knew where to go. And how about the second team who's been out for a two hours car drive? And they managed to be back in within two hours. But how do they feel? Do they feel like they accomplished something? Probably thought about where to go. Probably thought, of, uh, thought about where to go, which is actually good if they if they're having a, a healthy co conflict. But maybe they didn't come up where, on where to go. Maybe they were just driving around for two hours, and maybe someone wanted to go. Uh, to Istan, another one wanted to go to Lund, and the other one to Helsingborg, and no one were really talking to each other. So what you want them to do is to aim towards the same goal. At Kvita, we never set up those goals. Um, instead, we were having so many different ways of where to go and where to end up. So what ha happens also is that if we don't know where to go, and we don't manage to go there, we never feel like we accomplished something, which means that we will always judge the success in the eyes of someone else. So if we, for example, would have set up the goals ourselves and would have reached them, 
we would have felt great, even though maybe people around us doesn't feel or see think that it's a good thing or that we actually reach up to what we did. Maybe they think it was a failure. Maybe we didn't think it was a failure because we were actually reaching up to where we wanted to go, not where the rest of the people wanted us to go. So that's why it's important to setting up those goals so you know when you accomplish something and then go out and celebrate it. Yes, we got over here, we went to Ista. Great, let's party. And now we want to go to Helsingborg. Okay, let's do that. And we managed to get to Helsingborg and then we can be happy about that. But if someone else is judging us on where we're going, oh yeah, okay, they were driving over to Lund. Why did they do that? Must be a failure, must be a failure then it's always for someone else to judge. Um, and it leads us over to the third thing, which is about learnings. Oh, no, no, I'm going to give you another example before we, we move over, because I have some time. Mm. There was actually one time where we set up some goals for Kvita. This it just didn't happen that often. And in this time, it was a pretty measurable goals. You can work with both, both measurable and unmeasurable goals. So measurable in that terms of specific numbers, for example, maybe you work with them financially on you want to reach this market segment, this amount, this, for example, 20%, or you want to reach up to 100 millions or whatever. But you can also have unmeasurable, more unmeasurable goals like having fun, uh, learning on the way, creating a good culture, and those kind of goals. But we put up a, qu a quite measurable goal that was, we were going into a new city, it's called No Shopping, and we said, okay, let's try this out and see if we can get into five stores within a month. Okay, we were starting to work on it, and after a month, we noticed, okay, we didn't manage to get into five stores, we only managed to get into one. Then we start to reflect, okay, what, why is this? Why is this happening? Why can't we get into all those five that we wanted to get into? It shouldn't be that hard. It was a pretty easy system to actually start using in the stores, but when we start to reflect on it, we quite uh, fast noticed, okay, it's not, it's not the market itself, it's not the city, but it's the contact and the communication between the people who are actually selling our system into the stores. And this leads us over to, to the third one, which is learnings. Because if we wouldn't have put up the goal, those goals and reflected on them in the end, we would probably or maybe have thought, okay, it's the city, that's something wrong with the city. That's, and we, we wouldn't have evaluated why it didn't work as much as we did. So, and that's also what I've been, we have been working a lot with, for example, at Good Old, uh, Divya knows that, my colleague, old colleague who sits here, Divya. Uh, we have been working with goals, both within the teams and with the clients. Okay, where do we want to reach? If we don't reach it, or if we reach it, how does it feel? What can we learn from it? How can we take that further on to the next time? Because all the things you do and all the hours you put in, if it's your own company, if it's a company you work with, a project or whatever, it's time that you invest. So you want to make sure you invest that time wisely and learn from it. Because otherwise those hours are maybe not that, um, how do you say? Otherwise those hours are unnecessary put down to it. Are you following me? Yeah, cool. Um, and this, leads us over to, I have the pen in my hand, uh, the last part, which is, uh, um, what do I do? results. Because for a team to work, 
and to make them work together in a good way. You want them to aim for something. You want them to aim for going back and forth to Ystad. You want to have that clear vision that drives them, that motivates them to keep on going. At Kvitar, we didn't, we didn't, we were lacking a lot of these things. And we didn't really talk about it. We never talked about what is going wrong. Why is this? And why are we not having everyone on board if that's what we want? And if people are not, don't want to be on board, what are we going to do about it? So if you keep on avoiding those problems, it will only sum up and keep on following you in the end. So that was one, and we didn't either focus on the results, on where we want to go. And most of all, since we didn't put up those goals, we never learned from them. Okay, uh, this clock is saying the same as when I started. I'm a bit confused. I have a few minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, so the learnings that we actually did on this was one of the first one was to try to find something and focus on it. We wanted to build. Uh, we wanted to build the infrastructure. Okay, take Spot Spotify for example. It took a couple of years for them to actually build up their business and launching. The only thing they were dependent on was the record labels, more or less, to get them to sign the contract so they can use the music. Um, at Kvitar, let's say we were here in the middle, what we were trying to do is to get, uh, of course we wanted to get the receipts to the internet bank, so here we have the internet bank. Uh, to get there, we probably had to go through the, the card holders, um, so it would look something like this to get there. Um, of course, we have to capture the, the users in the stores. So we have the stores here. Um, and then to get into the stores, we have to work through something that is called a point of sale system. So we had to create connections to all these four different points to actually make it work. And I think if we would have looked up on what we were doing along the way and were able to bring it up within the team, we would have seen this quite easy. Because now when I, when I like lay it out for myself, it's, it's quite interesting to see, okay, how are we going to manage to build a system that are, uh, that are based and depended on four different infrastructures to even make it work. To sum it up, I usually, I usually use um, soccer analogies when I do things, but I couldn't find any, any um, of this in the soccer version. So I just I took the ones that are running instead. Um, and this is how I'm going to sum it up to see if you were following me on everything. Okay, so we had this team in the beginning. We were all going to run together for the win, of course. Um, but we didn't really decide on where to go. So some of the people started to run. And then we had someone left here behind. And we were started to run, but we didn't really have the same goal. And we didn't really know where we're going and what we were learning on the way. So when the first one starts to run, and he's going to hand, or she's going to hand over the, the, the stick to this one in a while, it happens a lot of stuff in the way, but she doesn't share it. And here is, of course, a side road, which is not correct. She takes it and gets delayed. Then she comes back. And the other one starts to run, but she didn't tell her about the side road. So she also gets in there and go back again. And they're all going left behind. And that is what happens if you don't share the knowledge within the people you work with. And if you're not going the same direction, then you are probably, not always, but a lot of times gonna fail or not um, do as well.
as you could have done if you were working all the way together and learning on the way what was happening. So make sure they're on the same level, speaking the same language and going the same direction. And that's why if you know that, no one else can blame you if you fail or not, because you know when you're doing what you want to do to succeed. Thank you guys. <laughs>